So, welcome to another T Commons Online call. Is on. I'm pretty excited about this one because we're actually going to start working on launching the T Commons. Uh, and we've been, it's been a lot of build up, a lot of foreplay, but we're finally here and we're ready to actually make it happen. Uh, so, to start off the, uh, in that kind of spirit, uh, to start off the call, uh, we want. I'm curious what you guys are excited about doing in working groups. So, uh, just a little bit of background: we are going to start breaking out into working groups and and divide the actual what needs to happen to launch the commons into smaller digestible pieces. And you know, I'm sure everyone has their own dream about what they want to do. So, I'm curious to hear what your guys' dreams are. Uh, I will start with. Uh, Jess. <laughs> Sorry, I was catching up and trying to find a mute button. This is just an intro. What are we excited about or what do we want to work on? Yeah, what what are you excited about working on within a working group to launch the TE Commons? To launch the TE Commons. Well, you know me. I like making videos and graphics and yeah, helping people to translate genius brains and uh, visualize their ideas and uh, get the message out. And I like the cultural build aspect as well. Livy and I have had some really nice conversations I would like to maybe flesh out more to get some action points around supporting the human side of what we're all doing. And um, yeah, just in general, um, supporting the community. The main things that excite me, should I pass to somebody? Cyprian. Yeah. Um, okay. So on my side, what I want to see happening is something uh, really applied, like literally having a document, simple one, like the simplest, simplest and shortest one possible that explains what are the T comments and how are we going to handle them? And that's it. Literally, that's it. And after that, we can have like a lot of other documents explaining a bunch of stuff about the community, etc. But just having literally these two big points in a small documents, that would be amazing. Can you say that again? What are the TE comments and? Um, so what, what are the TE comments and how do we manage them? Oh yeah, I need to pass it. Uh, it's gonna be Jeff. Cool. Um, yeah, what I'm most excited about in the uh, token engineering universe, um, you know, more. Actually, I've been kind of chatting with a whole bunch of different groups of, about a, a working group around like a generalized bonding curve. Um, I guess this is less so like building the token engineering commons. Maybe one of the working groups that like the token engineering commons, you know, is a is a part of or either funding or participating or anything like that, but basically unifying all of the different bonding curves that are out there between like Fairmint and um, the common stack and, you know, Aragon fundraising and, and basically building like one CAD CAD model that can encompass all of these different bonding curve use cases so that, you know, for the community currency alliance and so on, everyone can just say, okay, we want this functionality and this functionality and model and then go and build, you know, having this like template for a bonding curve with all of these different entry tax, exit tax, uh, tap, reverse tap, hatch, um, you know, reverse hatch, all of these different functionalities all in one model. Um, and I think that will will really help to like standardize the bonding curve space. Um, and, you know, Curve Labs is interested, Block Science is interested, CAD CAD, Common Stack, Token Engineering, Aragon, OneHive. I think there's, you know, Everyone. all the builders are in place. So. Um, that's my most excited working group. Um, again, not so much for the building of the token engineering, but well, I mean, funding ultimately comes from, you know, how we design the bonding curve and how we get money into this initiative as well. So it's it's a topic we don't like to talk about so much uh, in terms of like who gets paid to do what. But uh, I think money, you know, we see this in DeFi right now, year in finance and all these guys are leading money first and, and planning later, but that they also now have the funds to hire the resources to do things properly. So uh, Angela and I were just talking about that. Um, you know, I think the token engineering community is doing it right, starting with the human side, the, the what are our goals, what is our mission, what are our values, and how do we do this? 
Um, but I'm excited to to amp that up with you know the funding to get the attention and interest and reward all these wonderful brains for for all the contributions so far. So that's what I'm most excited about. Uh, and I'll pass it to Shebnam. Okay, so that's definitely exciting, Jeff. Uh, and also, people in the in the book, uh, you know, we we're literally uh, waiting for it. So this is great. And what am I excited about personally? Uh, Token engineering, my happy place is the book right now. Uh, I like how it's going on. Uh, thanks, Jess, <laughs> and thank everyone who's contributing or or sharing their ideas and and uh, yeah. What we need, you know, uh, is this cultural build and governance um, groundwork. It is so important. And uh, having gone through a couple of projects, um, this is where I see that we need that. It needs to be, you know, led by the right people, which I certainly don't belong to, really. I'm the computer added uh, governance guy. Um, but we need that uh, cultural world that has this, this human-centered view. And I'm keen to learn and uh, you know, embark the journey. And we should get that first. Uh, who? Angela, right? Angela? All right, yeah. I'm, I'm here. It's just uh, my connection for some reason is so bad. I can, uh, if I switch off camera, it's much better. All right, what I'm most excited about is actually um, once, I think now we are really at a critical moment because we need working groups and people who are working in parallel on a lot of different topics and who are able to contribute significant work um, and produce output. And that's definitely beyond the capabilities and availabilities of this group, right? On the other hand, I think it's it's also a great moment for a different or launching a new, for me, it's a new storytelling around that. And this is why I would be excited to discuss that with you, Jess. Um, we imagine once we are, we already discussing how people get rewarded for their contributions, right? And they can collect uh, at the moment virtual tokens in our spreadsheet. But there might be this moment when this got translated into real tokens and then certain value and the hatch and then people coming in and fund this. And I think what we also should stress out that for having a real good fundament with not only with having money contributors, but also with this, that we maintain this token engineering culture we have been setting up over two years, it's super important that we have this, these people who are already in our Discord, in our, in the book, in the uh, in the academy, in whatever meetups, that these people, in a way, collect their tokens because they should have a say and they should have have a, have power in this community. And this is a, for me, it's not only hey, contribute work, then you get tokens. It's almost vice versa. Grab your tokens because we need you as a voice in this community, right? So this is, um, for me, something very exciting that I think we should push into. And then second, I I, um, I think you noticed in the course of last week uh, more clarity around uh, rewards. What do I contribute? What can I get? What's the opportunity here? And to, yeah, to be, to become, step-by-step, um, step, more precise and transparent and so that it's just everybody feels comfortable and can concentrate on work. That's it. All right. Livy. Hello. Um, Hi. Yeah, for me, what I'm, what I'm most excited is to work on the, on the human side of things, on, on soft governance, on how how much we have to repattern our ways of behaving to be able to match with the tech that is pushing us to such an edge of behavior that it's not so familiar to us. So what is the processes we need to develop to make that happen in harmony? 
And I'll pass to Felix. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I mean, I, I entered a bit on short notice. So let me say I'm mostly excited being here and seeing the token engineering uh, community from the inside. Um, already written about you guys, which is weird. Um, Jeff, what you said on on uh, generalizing the bonding curve absolutely resonates with me, and you know I I also liked um, thinking about that and writing about it. Um, but I think I think I should be in the storytelling because that's what I do. That's good. We need we need we need that. Yeah, I'm um, I'm excited about. Um, and I think storytelling, it, it is part of that cultural wraparound, right? That, um, I don't know who put it there in the doc, um, that creative people and, and um, what was it, um, are often, or, you know, uh, are critical or, or do not feel comfortable with uh, quantification or pure quantification because it takes away their, uh, the, the quality qualitative side of acknowledgement and rewards. Mm. And I think that is where storytelling comes in. Cool. And I'm, I'm excited to, to work on that. I guess uh, I guess I'm the last person to go. Uh, right. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited to write the text spec. <laughs> Honestly, I really want to get the specification for uh, one hive or whoever ends up taking on the task of actually deploying the smart contracts and putting together a UI and, uh, and making the, the token, uh, functionality and, uh, defining all of that. So it's very clear for, uh, for people to build it and for us to rally around it. Okay. Uh, I forgot, I yeah. forgot three things. Okay. One, uh, Twitter cartel. I'm excited. Jeff and I wrote a proposal yesterday. We can share it with everybody here, um, AKA Public Goods Twitter Collective, because some people might get the wrong impression about cartel, but just basically um, cross promotion for all the different communities in the fundraising for now to start, but we offer ourselves in the future if other people need help. Two, um, so excited about memes. Every time I see a meme, Nothing makes me more excited. Griff, your conviction building meme with Christopher Walken, my one I made of you. I feel like we need just a whole crew to focus on the memes because this is the way that it really spreads and it spreads fast and it pushes through writing. Fit You can write 50 articles or you can create one badass meme. And I feel like with storytelling, going into the third point of storytelling, like I just, I just get so... I'm sure you all do too. Like I see this uni token thing today and it's just like all these crazy irresponsible shit coins that just make so much money. And there's opportunity here to hijack the memes and to flip them and get people focusing a little more on token engineering and the responsible and ethical engineering of these things. Or at least if you're going to make a bunch of money off shit coins, then redirecting that to public goods um, and funding Gitcoin grants. So memes, forever let's make some more memes okay memes i i couldn't agree more memes are memes are power so but uh next section of this call as we usually do is just review the roadmap so we are a little stuck on uh on, on the roadmap on the roles process and defining tec community stewards this is generally done in the onboarding document which we'll talk about more today uh obviously we have had a lot of work done uh, but now we're on to uh, working group topics and uh, getting uh, getting un, uh, like under our belt what working groups we need to split into and divide into so that we can actually launch this uh, token economy. Uh, so, uh, I, we did end up having to delay some things a week and I'm hoping uh, I ended up not just so you guys know because um, I'm kind of like managing the roadmap. Uh, I didn't end up, de I delayed a, a week here and I'm hoping we can make it up somewhere in the technical build. And uh, I just didn't uh, didn't move the 
deadline back because I really want us to be focused on actually deploying this token economy before, uh, you know, before 2021. We need something to fix this year. I'm hoping it can be the TE Commons. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Griff. Uh, so okay. Cool. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, yeah, and then uh, just to review the purpose of this call. So, this call's focus is really to honor the people who did a bunch of work this week uh, and show it off. Uh, it's and to gather data that uh, Livy and I thought were valuable that we might need and, and the community stewards and the people doing work here might need to actually make progress on uh, the task of the week. But uh, the purpose of this call is not to discuss proposals or brainstorm improvements because that really takes up a lot of time and it's uh, lost in this video. So uh, we really want to try to keep all the discussions of proposals and brainstorming of, of ways proposals could be improved or the work that was done uh, could be improved and put that right into the doc. You can do it in the call, make comments in all of these Google Docs. Uh, they're all very shareable and comment only. So feel free to pull up the docs and, and make your thoughts there while, pe while people are discussing uh, their thoughts. Uh, but at the same time, definitely a great time to clarify things because if you are confused about a topic probably a lot of people are so if you have a clarification question this is your moment uh, the other thing that we do in this call is we collect proposals and action steps for the week and this is done at the bottom of this doc so uh, you know uh, there, we're hoping to collect other things that people think need to be done this week uh, if you see something, say something, and let's get it in. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, and after the call, we're gonna dish praise, and uh, oh, and we're gonna show Bitcoin grants. Good calls. These are great. These are great additions to uh, this call. So uh, yeah, but to start off, uh, there was something that came up on uh, Improv Intro. There was a post that uh, was put in the main comments section. All that was really interesting. And uh, well, I'll let Livia take it away and, and explain uh, the benefits of improv culture. I guess just uh, improv culture, if you guys have ever seen improv comedy, like whose line is it anyway, uh, the benefits of how improv uh, and just saying like yes and rolling with the positive vibe uh, can actually allow for serendipity and, uh, and great collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. So it was very inspiring to read this article this week because it came in a good moment where I felt like um, sometimes it's very it's very easy for us to get stuck on things that are not perfect at the at at, at first instead of saying yes and seeing how this goes. So. Um, I'm an actress for who doesn't know. And one of the first things we learn in acting training is the ability to say yes at everything that is thrown at you because this is part of the game. If you say no, you're stopping the game with you. And if you say yes, even if you fail, you give the chance of the game to develop. So it's better failing with a yes then saying no in collaborative processes because we can see the flow of things going and there is one line that was really uh cool from there's the agenda here from um from this article that says artistically reading a place means in our project taking care of the place and they're coming from this premise that Everything we do is to transform the place we are uh, in a positive way. And here, um, as we inhabit this place that is the, the TC cultural build, um, I just wanted to leave this reflection of how are we improving this place and how are we taking care of this place and all our actions and how um, this improv saying yes, let's see, let's see how it goes. Attitude can help a lot with our collaboration. Cool. So uh, next on the agenda topic is actually the medium post. So Olivia, you're still on. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so yeah, this is the section where we review the work that was done this week. So if you guys have any comments, remember, open the notes, open the Medium post, and uh, throw it right in there. Yeah, I'll just share my screen, my screen quick. Um, can you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is just um, this is just the first draft that I hope Jess will help me with it. Um, so it's just an introduction of what is the TEC, and then talking a little bit more about the reward process. Um, what is the step-by-step -step of how things are being rewarded in this community? Because I think it's a good approach to show, um, as we discussed before, of what is actually being built through the contributions. And I think this number was really exciting to see that 42 people got rewarded for the cultural build, and it feels like way less, but there is a lot of participation happening, even in smaller ways. And... And then uh, in this section, I just explain more or less what was rewarded um, from this, this table here. So, um, so basically the work we did, we did. And, cool. and all the comments are welcome. Amazing. It's, here's the value of collecting impact hours. Uh, if you've asked, I would never guess that we have already 42 people participating and contributing. Well, the, the real thing here is that because the token engineering community is generally also rewarded with impact hours, uh, they're just, just a less than what the people who are like hands-on in the commons, uh, the, the reward gets spread out. Mm. Yeah, but I think it's still, it's, it's good. Mm. But you don't, said you, you, don't you think that, you know, uh, like literally uh, Griff, Livia and, and Chris who, who have done the most work, uh, you know, bringing this forward, don't get any praise and that's somehow missing. Yeah. And just to put it on the shoulders of the people who didn't dish praise, I would like us to fix the tools or the process. So, you know, it isn't a burden on, on the people themselves. Uh, but actually, tools fix that. I, I have a, a quick question on that. Do you think it would be a good implementation to have, so we have that preliminary list of this is the praises that were dished and the equivalent in working hours, et cetera. And then we have kind of a vote to validate the results. And if we see that something is missing or someone was not recognized as it should have been, then we kind of, you know, put a weight on uh, the, 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 the amount that they currently have. And like, you know, we have a bunch of weights per person to play with at every iteration. So I, then we, uh, we, keep, we keep the same results, but we just adjust the weights. I, 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 will, I will say that these are good clarifying questions, uh, mostly. Um, and uh, uh, yes, so uh, for Shevnems, uh, Livy and I do actually get rewarded. There's a, there's a conflict of interest because uh, we are de determining the praise quantification. So what we, uh, in the acknowledgement and rewards, no, sorry, the praise quantification reward proposal, it actually existed. Uh, we proposed that we would get the median amount. So we got the same as actually what Chris got, which was like four point something impact hours. What makes sense, that makes sense in some ways because we are paid by the common stack to facilitate this. So uh, we don't, we're not taking as much risk. We're not actually volunteers. Uh, so, and that is in the medium post. And then uh, the other piece on your, um, you know, uh, voting to, uh, to agree with this. This is also part of the praise quantification proposal. I mean, you know, there's a lot of stuff, so it's totally okay. It's a good clarification question. Uh, there is a uh, thing there that says, just kind of to keep rolling and keep things going fast. If there is a problem with the praise quantification for that week, then uh, or for that two week sprint, then it can be addressed and we encourage people to be open about these things. And uh, and we address it in the next praise dishing. So we 
dish praise when we figure out a way to just kind of fix it in the next round. Okay. And also from now on, we're, we're going to have open calls that anyone can come to the calls that we are quantifying the praise. Okay. And uh, last question on my side. Um, so you said that as you were already compensated uh, by the comments tax, then you are you don't have to kind of have that second uh, evaluation afterwards. But the first evaluation, do we have an eye on that? Is there like an open registry where we see that? Or how, how does it work? Uh, yeah, so in the, the, the praise quantification, um, there's a spreadsheet that is uh, that can show how many basically uh, in the last call I did like a five minute rundown I'll try to do a one minute rundown here uh, five minute rundown took 10 minutes so I imagine this <laughs> would take three uh, but uh, basically we take all the praise Livia Livia and I give each praise points and then we average those points out to be a like total percentage. And then we also estimate like how many impact hours, it's just kind of a, how many hours did people put in, you know, uh, just estimate for that two week period. And then the percentage of like points that someone got is multiplied by those hours. And then, the, then that's how many uh, impact hours they receive. And then we aggregate that because there many people did multiple praises. The big challenges here are making sure that a lot of praises dished so we don't miss really good work and then uh you know uh actually just being cool with things being a little fluffy you know uh that's kind of the the big the big question mark you know i mean like we could do source cred and we could try to spend a lot of time on tweaking this but because it's sort of a temporary um reward that only that at the hatch is dished out uh and we have a short time frame it's till december we didn't want to spend like countless hours trying to perfect it, just be happy with some serendipitous, like, you know, um, good enough and safe enough to try and then fix it on the fly. If things go wrong, we, it's subject, it's very subjective. So we can, we can, in, we can use the subjectivity to fix things. Yeah. But as you say, if we have a place where, you know, people who want to work on this can, can work on improving or, or testing out other ideas that that's all we need. And you can you can go uh, full speed ahead with the people we trust, uh, but then having to work on improving the tools to make our lives easier, I think it's super important. And I have a question on how uh, dishing praise again, because last uh, last time I asked, we were still using the testing dish channel. Now, whenever I want to acknowledge somebody for any contribution, I just dish ideally in the TE Commons Telegram, correct? Yes. So okay. right now we have the TE Commons Telegram, which is the best mm -hmm. place to dish. And mm -hmm. when when Kai gets back, he's finishing a job. Uh, we're going to actually create a TE Praise channel, or that's the dream. Oh, okay, got so, it. Mm -hmm. uh, but Kai hasn't come back from his uh, project. He's doing. He's a film producer, so oh. <laughs> you know he's yeah. actually making a film. He's uh, uh, helping produce film. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Once that's done, which should be the end of the month, uh, he will find the time to make us a, a TE praise channel. And then you can just praise in either one. And uh, and it just depends on who you want to like spam, kind of. And the TE praise channel can be like where we go hard because uh, that's all the channel will be for is praise. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and if anyone wants to dish praise, please uh, just talk to me and uh, we'll walk you through the process. Shebnam and Angela are already in. Jess, Jeff, Livia, and I yeah, can all I, do it. Yeah, you want in? Down to, yeah, definitely. Mm, yes, <laughs> sweet. Uh, uh, and also it's a lot easier to dish praise if people are in the TE Commons Telegram channel. So uh, just because then the, the name pops up. So if you're not in the TE Commons Telegram channel, uh, uh, you it'll be harder to dish you praise and you want to make that easy so okay um, yeah I have a question here mm. so I've, I'm used to to the praise thingy uh, from the common stack um, getting the common stack tokens what exactly is the difference 
Yeah. Between the Collins Tech so, tokens and the TE. Mm, no, that's a great person. clarifying question. So actually, what's cool is the common stack will probably reward you C stack tokens on top of your TE impact hours. So uh, because we're just like we want to dish out our our token as well. So um, the difference is that C stack tokens have zero value. Uh, they're non transferable. They will allow you to actually buy into patches that we support. So like uh, it's kind of like a a trust token, and there's a whole medium post about the C stack token and what that yep. does. The impact hours that we're using for the token engineering commons will actually translate into token engineering commons tokens directly during the hatch. So uh, and the value of that will depend on how much uh, money is raised in the hatch. So if a lot of money is raised oh. in the hatch, then the impact hours will have more value. And if uh, less money is raised in the hatch, or if, if the hatch doesn't succeed and this project fails, then the impact hours are worth nothing. So, so the way to get uh, TE um, tokens would then be either to have common stack tokens and buy in to the hatch because you are uh, you have reputation, or mm -hmm. you have worth the TE before and and accumulated uh our impact hours right yep and i so assume if, if you if you're an anonymous nobody there's no way to uh that's up to the te comments get into the hatch okay there, there might be so like c stack tokens uh will definitely well i mean we're hoping will allow that anyone with c stack the te comments will allow anyone with c stack tokens to buy into the hatch uh, although that might be mm -hmm. restricted to kyc there might be other restrictions that are like, you know, we have to figure that out in the working groups. Uh, but then also the TE Commons will, might be able to say, yeah, and also we're giving these other people who don't have C-Stack tokens the ability to buy in the hatch. And that's fine too. Okay, we gotta keep going though. Uh, so I'm just gonna push forward because we got way off topic on the Medium post. Uh, but the, the story there is we have a Medium, we're gonna post an article and post the results of the first uh, first group. Next pro next topic uh, proposal is the initial working groups proposal. So the idea here is that we have four to eight different groups that are actually executing work that we need to do to launch the token engineering commons. And I don't mean like support the token engineering community, but actually launch the smart contracts and the culture around using the smart contracts and get uh, get the plans ready for uh, launching this project. So, oh, hey, my stepmom's talking to me. Anyway, uh, the working groups that we're proposing are seven. Uh, these are described here. Uh, I'm, Shevnin will probably talk more about working group zero, and I'm very excited. I have some questions about working group zero still. Uh, but then we'll also need a legal working group, a group that is actually uh, trying to design the technical specification so that we can get all, a lot of questions answered before devs start working on it. We need people making memes. We need that comms group, uh, you know, explaining to people what we're doing, probably internal and external comms, uh, like Cyprian suggested in, in, the, in the thing. There's some pieces that we need to do there. Uh, we need soft governance culture for the TE Commons, like how do there's the smart contract rules, but then there's going to be rules on top of that smart contract, so uh, that are just cultural, and designing that. And then there's uh, how do we actually onboard token holders, not onboard into this cultural build, but onboard token holders. And then there's the tech team, which will actually do the design work, launch the websites with the DAP. And uh, and uh, follow the technical specification to deploy things. In general, I put these in the order of like most time dependent. I think legal and tech spec are and comms are the most like time dependent that we need to get started on. And then soft culture, of course, probably should get started on as well, especially since there's interest there. Uh, and then these two actually can wait a little bit. They're not like as far as like dedicating resources, my proposal is to wait there. 
So, uh, there might be some missing groups. There might be uh, one thing that seems to come up some is like, um, how do we manage funds? So maybe fund management should be a group, or maybe that's part of another group that's missing here is the community stewards. Uh, that's not like a working group. That's kind of this higher, this other group that is like coordinating the working groups. Uh, so there's some, uh, there's some thoughts there that I would love to see some comments in this doc if you guys have any questions or thoughts. Uh, any clarifying questions? Okay, cool. So uh, don't be shy, comment in the doc. Uh, there were great comments already by Lawrence and Shebnam. I uh, really appreciate it. And uh, we'll keep pushing forward with this. The next one is working group zero. So Shemnam, did you want to present yeah. Working Group Zero? Yeah. So uh, first of all, like there is literally, I would say it's not ready for voting at all because uh, for me, a lot of questions uh, clarified when I found the T handbook, right? And there is literally a list of what needs to be done. And I'm like, yes, this is it. This should uh, be Working Group Zero or what I wanted to have in Working Group Zero. And just quickly uh, sharing the screen here. Okay. Um, just to pinpoint a, a thing where we have a deadlock. Um, so first of all, um, so working group zero is when I said, okay, you know, near term, go, let's go, fine. You know, we're in a very trust dense group and we can pull it off, definitely. But um, during that, anything that can be improved should be worked on already. And that has a lot to do with, yes, how are we going to, you know, parameterize, configure, adapt our tooling, uh, you know, this computer added governance, why, for example, I love uh, common stack. Um, and, but what I also learned is uh, how do we do that in a human centered and in a co-created way. And I learned that from Fred, you know, the artist that uh, whose work uh, you, you mentioned. So these are important things where I say, I'm certainly not a subject matter expert or the person to be leading this because I don't like too many words. I use them wrong. You know, I want things that compile. So that's that. Uh, so my, First clarification is, can we please make that, uh, or you know, you can rename it, whatever, but let's take the important points and the soft governance cultural thing, move it up. Let's make this, this first working group. Um, that is important. I would not want us to have you know, separate working groups working on the same things because we are time constrained and we should be, uh, you know, gathering the people and work on this. So that's that. Um, then the next thing would be, you know, who's going to work on it? I proposed some uh, community stewards. Uh, I set a temporary lead from the beginning because I would say myself is not the person to lead this, first of all. But, uh, you know, how do we onboard these people? Are they already community stewards? Are they not? Uh, these are the things that need clarification. First, before we can start with any working group, I guess. So these are the things where I'm still confused. <laughs> okay, and um, yeah, and someone just needs to clarify this and say, okay, this is how we're going to go about it. Um, then also experts that we're proposing, you know, they might want to have uh, cash now versus some tokens in the future. How do we deal with that? No idea, right? So these are the things that are super unclear. What is clear is that we need that. Uh, you know, doesn't matter what we call it uh, soft or, or culture, it's co-created by the people here, uh, human centers, and these are the important things, right? Okay, was it, was it clear that we need to, you know, finish some definitions to be able to start with any working group, like how do we onboard? Uh, yeah, onboarding is definitely a blocker from starting on any working groups, so. so and the, this one may be not a biggie, depending on the experts. We, we, uh, 
we, we actually have a relatively defined process for that. Uh, okay. This is from, oh man, what's his name, Mano? Mano? Uh, do you remember, Livia? We had a small call one week. I think it was just him, Jess, you and I. But he has suggested that, okay, we have one like general payment scheme, which is the praise, but then mm -hmm. anybody who needs some extra funds to accomplish a goal, for instance, one hive deploying smart contracts or an individual oh. contractor, Maurice, thank you. Um, then they uh, they make an individual contract, you know, to say mm -hmm. what they need. And the process for that would be to make a milestone on Giveth, and then uh, we may need to formalize a structure around uh, what, where the money from Gitcoin grants goes. Right now, it just goes to an address I control. Uh, and then, but uh, my my suggestion or the current plan was to put that in to a, a Giveth campaign. And then we can allocate the funds without paying all the gas fees on, on mainnet, which is nice. Can we then have that work group working group template, which, you know, things that we know could work like this has in there and then also clarifies, you know, how do we suggest people? And then literally, you know, I called it working group zero, but what I meant is um, getting the people around who are going to be our community stewards. They should be in this working group, you know, uh, getting the culture of token engineers. We're talking, but still among each other. This, this, um, was, a, this was a clarifying question I had. Uh, was that uh, it seemed like working group, so uh, the intention behind the soft governance culture working group is really focused on just what we do with token engineering commons token holders. Okay. And, and it seemed like working group zero was more focused on the token engineering community as a whole, whether you have a token engineering commons token or not. Like, I'm literally thinking the way you get to hold this token should be through contributions as a token engineer. And all of this stuff, you know, I think it should be, this must be worked on. Like, how do you earn cred in this community? And what do you get, you know, you hold the cred and by this, you know, by contributing really the, the, the knowledge or, uh, all the things that we mentioned in our in our mission. And I think in my head, it made sense that we say, okay, now we have a near term running, you know, tactical plan. We can make this happen until December 24. But then uh, we know what we actually need to uh, really clarify, work on, co-create, not just a couple of people saying, okay, this is a great model, let's run, uh, 10 or 100 uh, simulations, but people didn't actually um, legitimize us, right? Uh, I, all of just, the... uh, we're, we're short on time, I hate to interrupt like this, but uh, okay. I just- No worries, I, I, Just on the clarifying question, like is working group zero focused on kind of more mid governance- Mid to long term. Mid, mid to long term of the token engineering community or token engineering commons tokens, token holders? Starting with that definition, I don't see a difference. Well, I some people, some so, people might be token engineers, but they don't actually participate in the in the token economy that the commons creates, right? Like they don't have tokens; they they don't even care. They're just working in Vienna. Are they part of token engineering community then? What? Are they part of it then? I mean, you can say you are a token engineer, but not be part of this? I, I think so, yeah. I don't think any, I, I mean, because the only way to be a part of it is to either help build it or to actually buy into the bonding curve and create tokens. So that there's going to be token engineers who don't do that. I think creating token engineering knowledge, like literally the public good, for example, what Jeff is saying, you know, uh, building these models that are reusable for other token engineers, this is a huge contribution that should earn a serious cred. And through those contributions, you should literally, from a contributor to becoming a community steward, it shouldn't be through buying tokens, it should be really through going through this process of contributing, uh, building this knowledge. And literally, let's take time to clarify that. We don't need to clarify it now. We don't need to launch it uh, needed 
for launching the infrastructure and everything. But what it means uh, that Token Engineering Commons is, I would say. Um, uh, Felix, you had something you want to say, and I'm going to put like a 60 yeah. second time box because then Livia's got to present onboarding proposal in the block. Yeah, so I think I think the question here is uh, what makes a community a community? Is it just uh, walking in the same direction, the direction by chance without talking to each other, or is it being a team? You know, like of course there are many token engineers out there that might even might not even be aware of this group and might do the same things and fight the same problems, but are they part of the community? And if yes, what 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 purpose does the word community serve there? And what purpose do the tokens serve? Yeah, this is Ostrom's principle number one, right? Boundary layer. So you yeah. gotta have a clearly defined boundary. But uh, Livia, onboarding proposal, did you want to go over that? Everything froze for me. Oh, no. Uh, OK. Well, let's see. Is it? Oh, no, I don't even see the link. Let me grab that. Does anyone have the link to the onboarding proposal? Right, here it is. 